picture on diathermy. Here's a picture of it uh, being utilized to heat deep tissues of the low back. So well, this is a modality. Again, we're going to be doing deep heating to a larger area than what we would want to use ultrasound for. So our opening case study is um, Gabe is competing in the Monster Dash. He fell in the mud and dislocated and fractured his proximal humerus. Now a year later, he lacks full external rotation and flexion. He still has three pins in his humerus. Hannah decides that the best modality to utilize prior to stretching would be shortwave pulse diathermy. And we'll try to answer the questions, do we agree or not, as we go through this lecture. What is diathermy? The prefix dia means through, and the suffix therm would be referring to heat. So it's a therapeutic modality that uses high-frequency electromagnetic waves, um, and they go through tissues to heat the deeper tissues. There's three general types of therapeutic diathermy units. One is long wave. Um, it ran on a 1 megahertz frequency. This is the oldest method and it's not utilized anymore. Um, short wave is the most commonly one used in sports medicine. Um, the waves are identical to short wave radio. Um, most often is 27.12 megahertz. And it is um, can be further divided into two types of shortwave diathermy. One is continuous, which is not used anymore because it would get too hot, and the other one is pulsed, which is most often used type of um, shortwave diathermy. And that's abbreviated then PSWD for pulsed wave, pulsed shortwave diathermy, PSWD. Um, and then microwave diathermy produces electrical fields in the tissues. It's not often used anymore because there's lots of contraindications in regard to metal, um, hot spots, if um, sweat begins to accumulate it has to be wiped off really quick or it can burn the skin. Um, so out of this list, um, short wave diathermy is what's most frequently used. Um, Again, it can be pulsed and it can be continuous, although continuous is rarely used. The um, shortwave diathermy device has um, what we call an applicator or a drum, and that's this piece up here. And the most common type of drum is called an induction drum electrode. Even though this doesn't look like an electrode, that's what they call it. And um, one or more copper coils are in the housing um, here, rigidly fixed. Um, if, the, if there's just one drum being used, it's called a um, monode. Okay. If two drums um, are used for the treatment, it's called a diplode. Just understanding what those terms are. So how does it work? Um, pulsed shortwave diathermy runs on 110 volt electricity course from the wall outlet. The generator then converts that um, AC electricity into radio frequency, which in the case of pulse shortwave diathermy is 27.12 megahertz. The radio frequency then passes through the inductive drum or applicator, and as the electrical energy is applied to the coil, a fluctuating magnetic field is generated around the coil. As the radio frequency exits the drum, an oscillating magnetic field is produced in the body. As the magnetic field then passes through tissues, it causes reactions in the tissues, producing both a thermal and mechanical effect. So there's two ways then that diathermy can heat tissue. One is called diplode reaction and the other is called eddy currents. So if we look at the dipole reaction, this is where molecules whose ends carry opposite charges um, begin to rotate. So the electromagnetic wave produces, produced by the shortwave diathermy causes the dipoles to rotate. And as these rotate, friction occurs in the body from these rotating and then produces heat. So there we have the heat. 
The other method is eddy currents, and this is when a magnetic field generates small circular electrical fields here, um, and the fields vibrate and increase cell, may, cell membrane permeability, which also causes heat. We have a paragraph here that says small eddy currents move in the direction of the magnetic field. Rotation, movement, and vibration of the eddy currents in the tissue results in heat. The greatest eddy current activity occurs in tissues high in conductivity. Now this would be blood and muscle. So they heat up. Heat is created by resistance in the tissue. And there is the greatest resistance in muscle. This is why shortwave diathermy can heat deeper tissue without overheating superficial tissue. So we have an electric field producing movement or friction and, and producing heat. What are the physiological effects of shortwave diathermy? Of course, we have an increase in heat, which causes an increase in blood flow, increased metabolism fibroblastic activity, collagen deposition, new capillary growth, white blood cell infiltration, and healing. On the other side of that page, um, it says decrease, and it will cause a decrease then of pain and muscle spasm. Our indications for using shortwave diathermy um, and again, these are not acute conditions, um, but strains, sprains, contusions, tendinosis, bursitis, pain, joint stiffness, osteoarthritis, decreased range of motion, and to increase extensibility of collagen fibers. Contraindications. Um, we have more contraindications probably with diathermy than any uh, other modality. So we have a few to, to look at. Um, so you might say, well, why wouldn't we just use ultrasound? Again, we're looking at treating larger areas than what we could um, feasibly do with an ultrasound. So contraindications are when the tissue temperature rise is not indicated, such as an acute injury. Um, ischemic areas. Anesthetic areas, so they don't have normal sensation, effusion, eyes, testes and ovaries, be cautious during, over the pelvis during pregnancy, over moist wound dressings, it can preferentially heat the tissue or heat the bandaging, um, a fever, epiphysis, we don't want to change bone growth, cancer, pacemakers, and metal implants, and typically screws and pins, um, except um, you can use um, shortwave diathermy for mild or moderate heating um, in some metal areas if the watts is less than 48. Some differences between thermal ultrasound and shortwave diathermy. Um, ultrasound can hit heat tissues three to five centimeters deep up to about 40 degrees Celsius, whereas shortwave diathermy can heat tissues three to five centimeters deep, um, but it heats um, a large area, which is your next line. So ultrasound is a small area, shortwave is a large area and sometimes can be 25 to 30 times larger than an area of ultrasound. Uh, there's a short stretch window with ultrasound um, of about 5 to 10 minutes um, but with shortwave diathermy your stretch window is much longer with 10 to 15 minutes so we can get a lot better stretch. Um, above that I made a note that's in your um, book on page 289, there's a table, 15.2, that gives recommended parameters. You do not have to memorize these, but it's a really good reference if you ever have to use um, shortwave diathermy, so you can have some help with 
um, knowing what parameters to set. However, most of the machines are um, pretty easy to operate now. So, what are some disadvantages? Why might we not have diathermy? Um, this has gone through kind of the, a fad. Diathermy was used a lot um, several years ago, and then it became just not as popular anymore. Um, and actually, in the last few years, it's starting to make a return. And so we're starting to see a few more diathermy units out in the market. In fact, we have a clinical um, right now that they have a diathermy unit and use it a fair amount in their clinical. So some of you might actually see that in use if you're there um, next year. Expensive, anywhere from 5000 to 25000 which is quite a bit of a budget um, for anybody to try to assume in order just to have a, one modality. Um, some of the information isn't good in regards to um, what we should use it for and necessarily the parameters, so there's lots of speculation. And then the lack of research, um, and part of that's because of the changes in equipment. It's advancing, it's quickly changing, and so then we don't have research that's up to date about that. So back to our case study, while competing, um, Gabe um, broke his humerus and doesn't have full range of motion and Hannah wants to um, go ahead and try to stretch that out and um, is, that, is that a good idea? So um, well we have a large area that um, has decreased range of motion, which could benefit from the deep heat. However, he still does have pins in there so if we have a pulse wave short uh, pulse short wave diathermy unit that um, we're just going to use for maybe moderate heating um, and the amount of the watt is below um, what was recommended in our previous slide let's see if we can find that 48 watts um, then yeah it should be safe to utilize and I would imagine a pulse wave short or pulse short wave diathermy unit would be below that amount so looks like that's the modality that we'll probably use on Gabe and get him going so um, we oh don't worry about that um, bring your outline for this short lecture with you to class on Thursday to turn in thanks